Hello and welcome to the Sparkling Autos YouTube channel. In this video we're going to be tackling this rather filthy looking BMW Alpina D3 by Turbo. And as bad as it does look here, believe it or not this is generally a very well maintained vehicle. I know that for a fact because it's actually my brother's car. However when I started this channel he decided he wouldn't clean the car for a few weeks just to let it get as dirty as possible for me to test some new products on. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. The products in question are from a brand called Garage Therapy. Now if you're not familiar with the UK detailing scene, Garage Therapy are a brand that have had a huge impact in recent months. So I've been very excited to try this range. The only product I have used before now is the wheel shampoo which I've been using for a few months and it's very impressive. So let's give the others a go and see what my first impressions are. Which is exactly what this video is, it's first impression. This is not a full product review as I don't think it's particularly fair on any brand or product to give it one go and decide whether or not it's worth using. So let's give it a go and see how we get on. So first up, the engine bay, and for that I wanted to tackle with the Garage Therapy Decon Shampoo. So just to read from the bottle, it says utilizing premium grade surfactants and high foaming action to intensively tackle traffic film, grease and grime. Sounds perfect for this job, so I diluted 50ml with 950ml of warm water into a sprayer and sprayed it over the engine. The Decon jam Jampoo, no it's not jam, Decon Shampoo isn't sold as, a, as an engine bay degreaser or any specifically as a degreaser but I just decided as it's a product I've never used I would just try it on something that it wasn't even intended for as it seemed like a fair and reasonable thing to do at the time to be fair though the engine bay wasn't actually that bad just a bit of light dusting and stuff so I just decided to make up a 5% ratio and get cracking Just want to mention here is for some reason this is a contentious issue, pressure washing under your bonnet does absolutely no harm whatsoever, provided you use a bit of common sense. Don't be spraying pressure washer directly into your alternator or directly on your, your electrical components and connectors for too long. But to be honest, giving a quick rinse on the bonnet to remove product on a modern engine should have no negative impact whatsoever. So what am I doing now? Well, who knows? The solution I made up for under the bonnet, obviously I made far too much a litre uh, of 5%. So I decided to use the rest, it's kind of like a pre-wash product. Now, there's no mention of this whatsoever on the, the bottle or directions. Um, but I had it made up anyway and I thought, what harm can I do? I need to strip everything off the vehicle anyway for applying more protection later. So, what am I talking about? I'm talking about spraying this around the lower half of the vehicle and then because it's so much, just spray the roof as well when I'm at it before I cover it in the Decon Shampoo the way it's supposed to be used in a foam lance. And here we are then, so as directed 400ml of warm water and 50ml of the Decon Shampoo in the lance and just spray the vehicle in the normal method, um, slowly front to back, bottom to top and just cover the vehicle without wasting too much product. And as always, make sure you get a good coating on the driveway stones as well. You wouldn't want them feeling left out. As you can see here, it does provide a good thick foam. As per the instructions on the bottle, spray it over evenly. Leave it for a good four to five minutes and rinse off. As with any of these type of products, if you're working in cold or damp conditions, you can leave it a bit longer. If you're working in warmer conditions or direct sunlight, get it off a bit sooner.
them back again. I didn't want to ruin the slow-mo with me talking gibberish, so let's get on with the rinsing of the vehicle. As always, I like to do this from bottom to top. Reason being, as I've explained before, you can see where you've been and you know you're getting all the product off. And to be perfectly honest, when it comes to removing the first stage like this, you actually see the dirt coming off, it's very very visible, and I just prefer to do it this way. There's no right or wrong, this is just my preferred method. I suppose at this stage I should actually talk a little bit about the product itself. So what actually is the Decon Shampoo? Well, it is exactly that, it's to decontaminate the paintwork, to remove the remnants of any previous sealants and protection etc before you start applying fresh ones. Now, there is some misconception, what it won't do is strip off any brand new last stage protection that you've applied. You can't go putting a wax on and then two weeks later decide you want to change the wax. A product like this is not going to remove that. And to be perfectly honest, I don't think I would want to use a product that was strong enough to do that. So I would just consider the Zero Decon Shampoo it's just another tool in your arsenal when it comes to the decontamination process. Put it along with your, your foliage removers, tar and glue remover and, um, and your clay process. But in terms of that, it is a very effective product. As you can see here with the water behaviour on the car, there's absolutely zero protection left in this vehicle after using it, and that's just one coat at the recommended dilution ratio. To summarise in, first impressions of the Garage Therapy Zero Decon Shampoo, easy for me to say. It's a very good product, cleans very well, does a good job of removing the last little protection. Yep, I'm very impressed so far. Onwards with the next one. So before we delve too far into the, the wheel cleaning process here, I just want to note that these wheels are actually due to come off the car to be refurbished uh, very soon, so I wasn't for spending too long on them. Ordinarily I would get the Garage Therapy wheel shampoo out and obviously fill up a bucket with brushes and the solution etc and spend time on the wheels properly. However, as we had an awful lot to do with this vehicle, I decided to skip the step and just coat the wheels with the iron oxide fallout remover. So spread it liberally, very liberally, as you can see, over the wheel. Leave it to dwell for 45 minutes and then rinse it off. Obviously, I'm not going to leave the video running for 45 minutes. I'm sped up the footage. In the meantime, I just want to show a couple of before and after shots of the wheel barrels after I did get them off the car while it was in the garage and just give a quick clean on the inside. Again, this was just spraying on the iron oxide fallout remover and rinsing it off again. I think it did a pretty good job. As I mentioned there a couple of times, I ordinarily would use the one wheel shampoo. Um, at the minute that's my go-to wheel shampoo, so you will see it in future videos if you subscribe to the channel. So on with the first rinse off then, it's been about 5 minutes now. Um, rinse the product off, as you can see just at the bottom of the spokes there's a couple of stains that just haven't been lifted. It's not a fault of the product, that's just sometimes a bit of agitation is required. Again, this is where the wheel shampoo would have come into play. Um, fallout removers. Despite what you may see on Instagram and other places, they're not wheel cleaners. They're not designed for that purpose. You should really clean the wheel first with a wheel shampoo, then take the wheel off the vehicle if you want to spray it with a fallout remover. It's not really advisable to be spraying these products around brake components on a regular basis. So I'm just going to completely ignore my own advice here for a minute and spray the wheel again with the iron oxide. The difference with the, the garage therapy iron oxide is that it has actually contains some of the cleansing surfactants from the decon shampoo. So there are basically shampoo ingredients in there, which one allows it to dwell for a lot longer and two gives it a bit more cleaning power. 
Again, I'm just going to let this dwell for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to go in with the, just with a soft detailing brush. There I am. And just gently agitate the product and try and get rid of a few of those stains. As I say, I'm not too concerned here because the wheels will be getting refurbished within the next few weeks. This was just to give them a bit of a freshen up because at the end of the day, the, the final shots wouldn't look too good if the wheels were still grubby. And when you're finished with the agitation part, time to rinse off again. One thing to note, especially when using a foliage remover as opposed to shampoo, is to thoroughly rinse. I mean, you should thoroughly rinse wheel shampoos off as well, but when you're using these products, especially when they're around brake components and other mechanical parts, make sure you get it all rinsed off. You don't want to leave that stuff on there. And really that goes for any wheel cleaner, whether it's acid-based, alkaline, whatever you're using. Thoroughly rinse it off because it can eat into the surface of the alloys and it doesn't do your brake components or the other suspension parts any good. Now we move on to the contact wash and the Garage Therapy 1 car shampoo. So to read from the bottle, 1 car shampoo is a premium pure pH neutral shampoo. It is the perfect maintenance wash shampoo that your car's paint deserves. So as per the instructions um, for a heavily soiled vehicle, I mix 30 meters, 30 meters? No, I didn't mix 30 meters, 30 milliliters. Do you know what? I didn't even mix 30 milliliters. I put two and a half capfuls in and a wee extra bit. Basically, I put roughly the equivalent of 30 milliliters into the bucket and mixed it up with the pressure hose. There, let's get on with the washing. So initial impressions in, everybody's favorite two buzzwords when it comes to shampoo are suds and slickness, or lubricity to give it its proper term. And this does have both, which is no surprise given the scientific measurements I poured into the bucket. You will see a lot of steam coming off the car here. It's not that the water's too warm, don't worry. It's just that the air temperature was that cold. I know I wore shorts, but I'm one of those people. It was actually about 3-4 degrees when I was washing the car, so the water is just a lukewarm temperature. It just looks really hot. Anyway, get on with it. So as you can see, as usual, using the, the safe two-bucket method and washing from the top down. So I have to do the roof first, the bonnet, or the hood, if you're American. I doubt any Americans are watching me yet. One panel at a time, wiping the panel in one direction with one side of the pad, flip the pad over and wipe in the opposite direction. And remember to thoroughly rinse the pad in the rinse bucket in between each panel. Anyway, enough waffling, what about the product? Well, as I say, it's very slick and very sudsy. It's very, very easy to use. I'm not a big one for talking about shampoos a lot, if I'm being perfectly honest. A shampoo to me is a shampoo. It's there to clean off the bits that the pre-wash hasn't removed. So from my personal point of view, I don't think there's any brilliant shampoos. It's just, I'm being honest. There are shampoos which do the job and there are shampoos which don't do the job. This definitely falls into the category of a shampoo which does the job. Main thing you need from it is obviously your suds and your slickness. You want something that can get underneath the dirt and wipe it away without marring the paintwork. From what I can see, Garage Therapy 1 Car Shampoo does both of those things and it does them very well. Now when I was finished with the buckets and wash mitts, I put 20ml of the one shampoo into the foam lance with about 300ml of warm water and sprayed it over the vehicle. Unfortunately I forgot the press record but it's nothing too exciting, it's just a matter of giving the vehicle good coverage to allow me to clean in all the nooks and crannies with the detailing brushes in around your uh, door handles, window seals, badges etc. You can do this with an APC if the areas are particularly badly soiled, in this case they weren't so the detail brush and the shampoo was more than enough to, to clean these areas. There's not really much more I can say at the minute, um, so rather than just babble on for absolutely no reason, I'll be quiet, let you watch me wash the car, and then we'll talk about things in a few minutes.
One favour I would like to ask, if you'd like to support the channel, it's completely free. Subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification and select all. That way you'll be notified of all future videos. And if you could, just press the thumbs up and give each video a like. It doesn't cost anything, but it really does help the channel going forward. Back again with the zero iron oxide, this time on the bodywork. Now what you'll notice here, which I should have mentioned at the wheel stage, is the rubber gloves do wear protection when using sort of any sort of chemical, but particularly fallout removers and harsher chemicals. Personally, I've never had a reaction, but you don't know until it happens. So better safe than sorry. Put protection on your hands and on your eyes if you really feel the need to as well, particularly if you're susceptible to a reaction to chemicals. I'm gonna make a confession here, as you're about to notice. I've used far too much of this product here. There's no two ways about it. I started off with a 500ml bottle and I think I used 350-400ml doing this card. Now it did include the inside and outside of the wheels, but it's still far too much. I shouldn't have used half that amount. That's no fault of the product, that was just me being a bit overzealous. First time I've used it. I'm not really looking at the bottle to see how much I was using. However, what you will see, which I wasn't expecting so much on the red car, was the reaction. As you'll see in a few seconds, there is a significant amount of fallout on the vehicle. A lot more than I was expecting. Another thing to note is, this product doesn't react as quick as some foliage removers have used, but personally I don't think that's very important. What's more important is the dwelling time of the product rather than the reaction time. Products that react a lot faster tend to need rinsed off a lot quicker, whereas with the Zero Iron Oxide you can get around the entire vehicle and leave it for, well you can leave it for a significant amount of time, but you can certainly leave it for a few minutes without having to rush to get the product off, particularly in cooler conditions like this. Obviously if it's warmer, you'll want to get it off a lot sooner before it does dry in. There's one thing you do not want to do is allow a fallout remover to dry onto your paperwork. Now it does state on the bottle that for heavily contaminated areas on the vehicle's paint, agitate the product using a premium microfiber. So I decided just to grind the entire vehicle with the microfiber, one which had been dampened in the wash solution. Now I'm not applying a lot of pressure here, although probably due to the amount of product on the car. You can see it's starting to turn white, but it fades away pretty quickly. So, after you've allowed it to dwell and you've agitated the bits that need to be agitated, it's time to rinse it off. One thing I'll say here is you will definitely need a pressure washer for this stage. I know I've already alluded to the fact that I've used far too much product, but even at that, it's still a significant job removing this. Probably to do with the, the decon shampoo within the, the iron oxide, but it does foam up a lot when you're trying to remove it with the pressure washer. So just take your time, as always, and make sure you get it all off the car. So verdict again, well, apart from the removing the product, which as I say, most likely down to me over applying it, I must say again, very good product. The dwell time alone makes this product worth buying. It is absolutely fantastic. The fact that I would say you could leave this, go and have a cup of tea and come back and it would still wouldn't be dried on. I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm just saying it has a very good dwell time. So now I'm getting ready to clay the car before the polishing and protection stages. And with any claying process, you need a lubricant. Now all I'm going to use here is the what was left in the foam lance from the second half of the contact wash. So it was a mixture of 20ml of the one shampoo in about 300ml of water. Spray it over the entire car and then rub over it with the clay mitt. 
Personally speaking, in the majority of cases, I prefer to use the mitt over the bar, mainly because of the time it saves. Clay barn is a lot more intricate, and with the mitt, if the car is well enough maintained, you can just give it a, a quick, almost like a once over, and you're still going to remove the overwhelming majority of the surface contaminant. Incidentally, this particular climate is one I picked up in the Black Friday sale from SGCB UK, and this is the first time I've used it. I must say I'm fairly impressed, it's done a good job. And if you've never used a clay mitt before, it's definitely something I would recommend trying. The amount of time you can save, if you're somebody who clays on a regular basis and your car is well enough maintained, definitely worth trying that once at least and see how you feel about it. Anyway, enough about the mitt, this is all about the lube. So what is the one shampoo like as a, a clay lubricant? Again, it's not designed for that purpose, but as with any slick shampoo, done a very good job, must say. No gripping or sticking issues. I was able to clay the bar, clay the bar, I didn't clay the bar, I clayed the car with no hassle at all. So what am I saying then? Well, basically, Garage Therapy One Shampoo makes a good clay lube. So now that we've pre-washed, washed and decontaminated the car, it's time to dry it off to get it ready for the next stage, the polishing, the pre -pre polishing, the polishing and protection. But first we have to dry it off. As I mentioned in previous videos, if you've watched them, if not, by all means, subscribe and go and watch them. But before you dry a car, before you dry the paintwork of the car, you need to dampen your drying towel. This is because a damp towel will absorb the water faster than a dry towel. I've mentioned this before. And the quickest way to do this is to grind and dry your glass first of all. And once you've dried your glass, you can start drying the bodywork. Now, the car is clean and decontaminated, so you can dry it in whatever method, whatever order you like. Personally speaking, just as with the wash process, I like to dry it from the top down. It just makes more sense. So this particular towel I'm using today is a, a waffle wee from Ragmaster which is the UK either division or selling agents for the rag company who are a very well known and well respected uh, microfiber producer why am I telling you this? I don't know I'm just trying to fill a bit of space here while I'm drying the car but maybe I'll just stop talking and let you listen to the music while I finish this off So we've carried out our pre-wash, we've cleaned the vehicle, we've decontaminated the paintwork and we've even given the wheels a once over. How do I feel about these products? I must say first impressions are very good. Definitely won't be the last time I'm using them anyway. And you can see, I mean results speak for themselves. Look at the difference in this car already. And we still have to polish the car and apply the finishing products. So far so good. Now I just need to get the car into the garage and continue with the next stages. <laughs> 